Jack Morton brings a birthday cake to his mother's grave. Meanwhile, the two women discuss his candidacy for a member of the secret order. The blonde believes that an orphan criminal has no business being in an elite institution, while her friend is confident that the boy's abilities are enough to compensate for this. Opening the envelope, Jack sees the denial of enrollment, but in a second the text of the letter changes. The boy says goodbye to his grandfather and moves to campus. The old man is happy for his grandson, but he is a little sad that they have to part. In spite of this, Peter advises Jack to prove himself so that he will be noticed and invited into the secret order of the Blue Rose. That's the only way he can get to the one who took the boy's mother. Peter doesn't notice Jack being picked up under his arms and taken somewhere. Jack and a couple of other guys are about to be initiated into the school community, but Morton refuses, knowing that he has already secured a place in another order. The student is let go, and he checks into the dorm, finding himself sharing a room with the strange Clay Turner. The roommate in the other room is more interested in Jack the guy notices a blue rose on him and tries to find out how he can contact the order. But the conversation doesn't work out and a fight ensues between the guys, which Alyssa Drake has to break up. To impress the girl, Jack arranges a tour for the freshman, telling him everything he has learned about the university. The plan works and within minutes everyone is buzzing, discussing the couple's affection. Jack meets Randall, a cheerful senior who assures him that the Order of the Blue Rose isn't the coolest organization to join. But even thinking nothing of it, Randall is convinced that society doesn't need people like Jack and he has no chance of getting in. The brunette of the Order, Chancellor Stone, brings a detective to Jack's room to investigate the death of a guy Morton had a fight with. Jack assures him that he didn't see his opponent after the incident and the detective leaves with nothing, promising to check the freshman's alibi. The Chancellor gives Jack a warning, but when she leaves, an envelope and a blue rose are left on the boy's bed. When Jack arrives at the designated spot, he finds several other candidates and a pair of mass curators who give the contestants a task they must find the coins that will determine the three finalists. The group teams up against Jack, hoping to split the seats without him. Jack is doing fine on his own, and he goes into the woods in search of the coin, but instead he finds one of his rivals seriously injured. Morton tries to help him, but the guy is not friendly with the new guy, so Jack leads him and continues his search. Morton finds a coin that's inside a box with a wild animal in it. Showing courage, he slips his hand in and takes the artifact, causing even more displeasure from his rivals. Along with the Murr, Jack finds a student who has been attacked by someone. Help does not arrive in time, and the student dies, which raises even more questions for the guy. The next assignment proves difficult, and Jack insults with his friends and the instructor. Jack has a run-in with one of his classmates and decides to follow his rival. Sneaking into an abandoned building, Morton finds a secret passage and finds himself in a dungeon where a meeting of the Order of the Blue Rose is taking place. The members watch a tape of him trying to help a girl outside the university to see if a candidate is involved. Jack tells his grandfather about everything, who is delighted to learn that all the stories about the Blue Rose are true. Peter asks his grandson not to panic, but Morton is frightened even as another letter and a protective amulet from members of the Order appear in his pocket. After guessing that Alyssa is also a member of the Order, Jack directly asks her uncomfortable questions. On the Order's errand, Jack must dig up his mother's grave. He is filmed doing this by Kyle, who demands that Morton withdraw and step aside, unless of course he wants everyone to know about his nocturnal pastime. While the guys are arguing, a giant werewolf appears behind Kyle's back. It attacks Jack, but somehow doesn't hurt him. Along the way, Jack meets the handlers, who inform him that he has dropped out of the running. To appease the outraged lad, magical dust flies into his eyes and the Order's servants carry him off the spot. After coming to his senses, Morton notices a dry blue rose nearby, and he turns to Alyssa for help, begging her to give him another chance and telling her about the monster in the woods. Peter draws a portrait of the monster from his grandson's description. Convinced that it is a werewolf, Jack asks the old man to help him find the monster, but Peter prefers nature to sigh for itself. Alyssa reports the monster to Chancellor Stone, and it turns out to be a big problem for the Order. Despite this, the Master does not allow the girl to express her options, stating that they will find more experienced advisors. Peter, on the other hand, persuades his grandson to pack a weapon with him that will help him defend himself. On the way to campus, Jack spots a werewolf, but he manages to slip away from the guy, and Morton feels foolish, emerging from the woods with a stun gun. Meeting Amir, Morton asks his friend not to stray too far from the people, lest he be hurt by the clutches of the monster that attacked the other students. But despite his friend's warnings, Amr dies right in front of the other students. Morton tells Randall about the werewolf, and the boys plan to catch him. They set out to follow one of the fellow students, but at some point Randall leaves his buddy alone, and it seems he has an idea to set Jack up. 
Along the way, Jack runs into Alyssa and tells her of his plans to track down the werewolf. The girl joins her mate, and together they continue their pursuit of Gabriel. The mentors of the Order again argue over whether Morton had a place among the candidates. It turns out that the blonde is Gregory's mother, and she threatens her friend that she will report everything to the High Master. Jack and Alyssa's surveillance yields results they manage to save Gabrielle, but the attacker turns out not to be a werewolf, but something resembling a risen corpse. The pair seem to be in danger as well, but suddenly a voice calls the monster away, and it leaves the friends alive. In the evening, Randall tries to get more information out of his buddy. Reasoning out loud, Morton thinks that someone who couldn't make their way into the Order is behind this and is now trying to eliminate the competition, since all the dead were candidates for participation. Jack is convinced that Gregory is behind it. Alyssa also investigates and learns that at night they saw Gollum, a creature made of paper and glue, which is given power by a magic word written on his forehead. The boy tells his girlfriend that he suspects Gregory, but Alyssa is convinced that Gregory is too talentless for such a thing. Back in the room, Jack notices that half of Clay is covered in dust and the roommate who shows up confirms his suspicion he admits that he is a golem and is going to get rid of his buddy. Remembering Alyssa's words, Morton wipes the magic word off his buddy's forehead and so he manages to escape. Jack brings the golem's head to a meeting of the Order. After bringing the monster's head back to life, the master discovers that Margaret, Gregory's mother, created it to make room for her son. For defeating the golem, Jack is accepted into the Order. When the headmaster removes the mask, Morton sees before him his father, who he has been trying to find for many years and who does not know that Jack is his son. Jack is chased by a werewolf and runs into an abandoned house to escape, but there he is met by a new threat and something from the box covers the boy with a thick coat of fur. Upon coming to, Jack notices that he has no clothes on. Nearby he sees Randall and a couple of other strangers who call themselves the Knights of Street Christopher and confess that they are werewolves, just like he himself is now. Morton doesn't believe his buddy, but when parts of a deer come out and Randall tells him that it was his dinner last night, Jack begins to suspect that this is no joke. Jack is outraged and demands to be turned back into a human, but the society tells him he has no choice but to vow to their cause. Despite entreaties, Morton runs away, and the friends decide to destroy him unless he changes his mind. On the way to campus, Morton gets sick and begins to transform, but is distracted by a disappearing altar with pictures of the dead. The guy's first assignment at the Order is to clean up the hall after the ritual, which Alyssa will oversee. The Order of the Blue Rose throws a party where Morton has to be a waiter. There the boy meets Edward, his father, and he can hardly restrain himself from turning into a wolf in full view of everyone. Randall learns that Jack has been accepted into the Order after all, and he informs him that he will now become their double agent the werewolf inside the Blue Rose. Edward gathers the Order's most talented students and assigns them to break the spell on the Obsidian. After peeking at Alyssa's spell, Kyle is the first to come forward, but the deception ends in him breaking his arm. Peter arrives to visit his grandson with his new plan. He asks his brother to gather evidence of the Order's existence so they can uncover it and destroy Edward. Alyssa invites Jack over to give him his first magic lessons, but the boy stops her, fearing that the sound of witchcraft will make him turn into a werewolf again. In the evening in his room, Morton has to practice to learn how to restrain his appeals. Finally, he succeeds and now Jack and his friends can do witchcraft, such as making others see and feel things that aren't really happening. Upon learning that Jack has fallen into the order, Randall's friends think it's time to get rid of the guy. To defend his buddy's life, the headman has to accept a challenge in a beer competition. Peter is angry at his grandson for not seeking to destroy the order and Edward by avenging his mother's death, but Jack admits that he just can't get pictures because of a protection spell. Alyssa discovers that a buddy has been using forbidden magic. She covers for him, warning him that this is the last time she'll do it. After seeing her buddy off, the girl returns to the obsidian and manages to break the spell, subduing the ancient stone. Jack guesses that his friends have a plan to harm one of the teachers, and he hurries to warn her, but the sound of witchcraft makes Morton turn around. He wakes up in the woods, next to the body of his beloved professor, convinced that he was the one who chewed his throat. Jack tells Randall what happened. The lads go to the house of Miss Benson, with whom it all began, to see if the werewolf has done the same to her, but the house is empty and Morton asks his friend to search it. Alyssa asks the Chancellor to relieve her of her mentorship of Jack, citing the fact that she is very busy studying with Edward. This makes Stone jealous, and she hints to the student that there are many like her in the master's class. Miss Benson ends up in the hospital and Brandon tells his buddy that the official version is a car accident. After calming down, Morton heads to the cafe to discuss with Randall what to do next after eating his own professor.
The headman lures his buddy back to his place, and along with his friends from the Order of Werewolves, he locks Jack in the basement while they decide what to do about his witchcraft. Alyssa comes to Edward's lessons, and he shows her the knight's body, in which is hidden another part of an ancient book, the same one that was in the Obsidian. Jack manages to convince the werewolves that he himself wants to destroy Edward, so they decide to give him a chance and make a temporary alliance with the wizard. Edward, meanwhile, convinces Alyssa to go to the dead knight's subconscious for him, that's where the second part of the book is hidden. The girl meekly submits to her tutor, not realizing the risks she is taking. The werewolves teach Morton how to release and control his wolf, but still he resents his friends for not giving him a choice and turning him without asking. Alyssa's attempts constantly come to nothing the girl is thrown out of the other world and fails to find the scroll. She is unable to find the scroll. Finally, Edward decides to take pity on her and stops the ritual, promising to continue tomorrow.